Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's do some algebra. Okay, we're going to start with multiplying difference of squares, perfect squares. We're going to get into some factoring. We're going to really do some factoring trinomials and then absolute value. Remember that? We're going to do some spaced practice. This is going to be great. All right, multiply difference of squares. We could do the, the whole thing. Draw the boxes, and for this one, I will, right? Five, uh, and you, you can as well, because whatever I write down, you write down. But I want you to notice a pattern, right? We know that when we do these boxes here, we end up combining. Right? And when you add those together, they cancel out. So with the difference of squares, we end up with just the first box and the last box. So you can just write that. 25x squared. So if you see this one right here, I see it's a difference of squares. And I know that because I see, oh, let's talk about that. Squares, what is a difference of two squares? That is, um, why is it called that? That's because it's like a difference means subtract. And then x squared is, is the square of x times x. And a squared would be the square of a times a. And so this is the factored form of the difference of squares. But the difference of squares themselves are when you multiply those two things together. And you end up with x squared, three times three is nine. So you just have to multiply the, the first two and the last two. Make this one, I don't even have to draw the boxes. x squared, x times x, three times three. So if you see the same thing with the one with the plus and one with the minus, then you know you can do that. Now this one looks like the difference of squares, but this time they are the same here. So in this case, for us, we will draw the boxes. X squared minus 10X minus 10X plus 100, combine those x squared minus 20x equals negative 20x. Just kind of speeding through because we did, uh, we did this last week, but I wonder if they'll eventually show you ones that look like this, which a lot of people got wrong on the learning check. They could have written this, like that because it's the same thing twice. So I told a bunch of people, I told everybody on Friday to expand something that looks like this. And they told me X squared plus 100. So just remember that something twice is X minus 10, X minus 10. And then from there, you draw the boxes. And from there, you combine the like terms. This makes sense. I feel like I'm <clears throat> saying too much. So let's. See the, there we are again. But in general, you can draw the boxes. Okay, now let's move on to factoring. Factoring is when we start with the polynomial and we go backwards to two things that multiplied to it. Okay, so that is uh, taking out the factors. Factors are things that multiply to a product. Two factors multiply and give you a product, right? So when we're looking at this eight X squared minus 24, we think to ourselves, what is the GCF 
of 8 and negative 24, or just 8 and 24. Um, and so what can we divide both 8 and 24 by? Well, it is 8. You can divide both of them by 8, right? If you divide 8 by 8, you get 1. And 24 divided by 8, you get negative 3. And so what we can do is we can, now that we know what the GCF is, we divide both the terms by that. And, and we put that number out front. <clears throat> so GCF factoring works like this. You have um, we have term one plus term two, and then we divide both of them by the GCF, and then we write it in. Um, we can divide both of them by the GCF as long as we write the GCF out front. And you can see if we were to multiply, distribute it in, the GCF would cancel. That's why we can do that. So we're going to divide both of these things by 8 because they can both be divided by 8. And then we're going to write down with that 8. So 8x squared divided by 8 would just be x squared. 24 divided by 8 would be 3. And the answer is 8x squared minus 3. All right, let's do one more. So we're dividing. We're, oh, okay. So here, they gave us, they gave us, um, the GCF, and well, they give us the width of this rectangle. I mean, the height of this rectangle. They're asking us for the width, right? So, again, we're going backwards. We're thinking about division. What would go here so that if I multiply it by 5, I'd end up with 10x squared? In order to answer that question, we have to take what is in the box and divide it. By what we see in front. That would be 2x squared. So just like solving equations, doing the opposite ends up getting us the answer. And then the next one, I'm going to take that term and divide it by what I see in front, and that would be negative x. That means there's a negative x up there. And then Take the 15 and divide it by the 5, and that's 3. So the width of this rectangle is 2x squared minus x plus 3. 2x squared minus x plus 3. All right. Ooh. Now, factoring quadratic intro. So we always look for the GCF and we write it in front. We divide all the terms by that GCF. But sometimes there isn't one and it can still be factored. Okay, so here we see this trinomial. You see a GCF x squared, that's one, three, and two. Is there a GCF of one, three, and two? No, just one. But is, does that mean that two things didn't multiply together to give us that? It does not. There are two things that multiply together to give us this product. So how we're going to figure it out is we're going to solve the puzzle. We're gonna, we know that when we multiply, that first box always ended up being x squared. So we're going to put this x squared right there. Okay, and then you know what can go in this last box here. The last box was always a number. If you remember, these two boxes always combine to give us our middle term. And so we're going to put the two, you know, that two 
goes in the last box. And then these two boxes add up to the three X. So you can always, always set it up like that. The first term in the top left, uh, the constant term in the bottom right, and these two boxes add up to the middle term. Now, our goal is to figure out what goes on the outside. So we know x times x gives us x squared. And what times what gives us two? There's only two options. Two times one. That gives us two. Now let's fill in the box. So x times one is uh, x times one is one x. X times two is two x. And lo and behold, 1x plus 2x equals 3x. So I know the answer to this question. It's x plus 2, x plus 1. All right, I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to write parentheses x plus 2 and parentheses x plus 1. See that? All right, so let's now look at that. They did. All right, so this one they gave us a little bit extra information um, and we're supposed to find the width here. But still we got our x squared going in the first box. The 36 is going in the last box. The 13x is the sum of these two boxes. And they gave us this additional piece of information, x plus nine. So we can put x and nine up top or on the side, whatever you want to do. Now, what's got to go here? Well, it's got to be an x, because x times x is x squared. And what's got to go there? What times 9 is 36? I think that's 4. So then we already know x plus 9, and now the other side must be x plus 4. So they're asking us, what is the width? I think it's x plus i. Okay, so those are the four refactoring, a little bit of uh, multiplication. And now, pause the video and try this quiz before watching me do the answers. Okay, the graph of absolute value of x is shifted down nine and right four. Remember that when you shift right, that ends up being a minus inside the absolute value bars and down being on the outside, we see a minus nine. So it's that left right shift is opposite of what you think it would be. All right, now this is a size change scaled version. So our F is the basic function. And So I'm gonna, I know it's a shrink there. Well, when you put a number in front of, that's bigger than one, that makes it, uh, that shrinks the function. If you were to put a number that is in between zero and one, that would stretch the function. And then those other two choices I just saw, those would shift the function. And since G is a skinnier version, that must have a number bigger than one. And the only number bigger than one is A. So I'm gonna choose four thirds. All right. Okay, graphing this one. So what do we wanna do? We wanna talk about the shifting. So it's going left to going left to, we're going up to uh, shrink five factor and even the negative in front is a reflection. So it's gonna open upside down. All right, so then we're going to go left two, and we're going to go up two, and then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go over one, I'm going to go down five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's
that covered all the bases. All right, the graph of y equals the absolute value of x is reflected across the x-axis and then scaled vertically by a factor of one fourth. So the reflection means there's a negative in front and then scaled vertically by a factor of one fourth means there's a one fourth in front. So it must be this one. Last one, f of g, or function g can be thought of as a translated shifted version of f of x equals the absolute value of x. Okay, so let's just look and see how much is it shifted. Well, the vertex is at seven, four. So it's shifted right seven. So I should see at x minus seven and it's shifted up four. So I should see a plus four outside. And it is minus seven on the inside, plus four on the outside. All right, look at those uh, mastery points going on. Go ahead and give it a try.